Hello everyone, welcome back. On today's episode, I'm going to be covering polymorphic relationships inside filament. It's been requested multiple times, so here it is, the video. Now, on this video, I'm going to be covering one-to-one -one and one-to-many relationships because they are very similar, basically the exact same process, and then I will probably make a different video for many-to-many -many polymorphic relationships. So let's get started. Now, for today's video, I have an example I want to build is for a comments polymorphic relationship. So let me show you guys the migration I have. So basically, I have a comments table. So I'm not going to be coding this. Uh, I assume you guys are already familiar with how polymorphic relationships work in Laravel. But basically, I have a comments table. Uh, the comment has a user, basically like the author of that comment. And then we have we are using morphs over here. Basically, we have a polymorphic relationship, and I'm naming it commentable. This is actually one of the examples on the Laravel documentation. So basically, a comment can be put on a post on another user, on a product, anything you can think of, obviously we can go ahead and use here. And then we also have the comment itself as a string. So what we are going to do, basically build the filament admin for this and also show the relationship on all the associated uh, resources. So let's get started. The first step for us guys is we need to actually go ahead and create the resource page for this one, okay, for our comments. So let's get started. So the first step, I'm gonna go ahead and type in PHP artisan, make filament resource, and if you guys always forget these, uh, you can obviously check the documentation or just type, hit enter and a lot of will, will, you know, recommend these to you, okay? So you don't have to always memorize these, but basically that's all we have to do. And then for the resource name, obviously it's going to be a comment, okay? So that's our comment model. So now that we have created a comment, I would also like to show you guys my models itself. Uh, now, this is basically the default standard way of defining polymorphic relationships in Laravel. So it's not super important, but in case uh, you just wanted to see it, basically on my comment model, I have this commentable function and I'm using morph2. So this is for my comment model. And then on my post model, uh, I have these comments and I'm using morph many. So again, this is a one to many relationship and the exact same thing on my user class as well, okay? So that's basically the relationship. I'm, this is exactly identical to the default polymorphic example on the Laravel documentation. So that's why I chose it. Or it should work with any other example you have. So let's go ahead and open up our comment a resource, which is this page over here. And if I reload my admin panel, now we should have a comment section, okay? So for polymorphic relationship, it's actually quite easy to do. So uh, let's get started with the first one. So first thing is I would like to show uh, the user for this. So let's go ahead and do that. This is gonna be a super simple select. So I'm just gonna say a user ID and then say relationship, a user name, all right? And then let's also make it be searchable. So this is gonna be our user. Let me cre click on create new. So this is gonna be the author of the post. And let's also preload this. So now that we have done this, let's also do the super simple stuff, which is going to be our text input for the comment itself. So I'm just gonna say comment. We don't need any validation for now. So for our commentable, which is basically this one, Filmon actually has a custom type for this and it's called morph to select, okay? So it is going to be morph to select and this is the import pad if you guys wanna manually import it, filament forms components morph to select and it's a custom select that basically supports you know, polymorphic relationship. So we're gonna say call make and then pass in your, the name you use over here, okay? For the kind of uh, the prefix name for the commentable ID and commentable type. So I'll pass this over here. It's also gonna be basically this name you use on your relationship function name. And then after that, you need to go ahead and call types. Now what this function does is it basically defines what types of uh, other resources or models can be used in this relationship, okay? So in this case, you can pass in any class you like. So I'll just show you guys what I mean by an example. Now, this one accepts an array, obviously, you can have multiple types. So, and for this one, you, you need to go ahead and use a class of call types. So it's going to be filament, forms, components, morph to select. So that's the class name that we need to use. You can also go ahead and do it this way because I, I think there are a few other classes of type. So it can potentially be some collisions here or you might accidentally import the wrong one. And then you can say make. And in here, you need to pass in that class's type, okay? So in this case, I would like to be able to post. I only have a few models. I have a comment, post, a user, and a category. So I'll make it so I can comment on these three, okay? So I'm gonna say uh, I can comment on a post. So I say post class. And then you can also go ahead and call a method of title attribute. And this is basically what's shown 
uh, as the name, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna say title because I have a title a column on my post. Now we can basically copy paste this for as many types that you allow on this relationship. So we have the post uh, here, I'm gonna say a user. So you can also comment on a user and then here I use the user's email. And then last but not least, we have, we can also comment on other comments, right? So we have basically nested comments. And then for the comment here, uh, I guess I'll show the ID. We don't have, I think the comment itself is gonna be too long, so I'll just use the ID. So basically that's what you need to do. Use morph to select, pass in the relationship function name and then define all the allowed types. And then once you have done that, this works quite similar to the regular uh, select as well, okay? So if you want to make it searchable, you can go ahead and say searchable. And I also like to do preload generally for these because if you don't do that, then you need to search for something. And generally, if you have a large table, you don't know what you're searching for. You just want to see something. So I like to call a preload sometimes as well. So basically that's all we have to do, okay? So let's save this, let's go back. Let's do a quick reload. And selling us user does not exist. I probably forgot to import it. Uh, let's do that. Let's also try for comment as well. All right, so now we can see guys, we have our user basically, this is a regular relationship, so we don't need to worry about that. I do have a video on these as well, if you guys are interested, but I assume you already know, some random comment. And then now we have this commentable over here. And first you can select the type of the class. So let's say post. And then now once I'm here, uh, I go over it, I can see the posts. And let me show you guys the posts that I have. So these, I have three posts. And then as you can see over here, we are able to see them, as you can see. And then I can also go to a user. Now you do need to manually clear this when you do that. As you can see, it's sh showing me matt at youtube.com and admin at whatever, and I can also search, okay? So that's it. And I don't have any other comments, so this should be empty, right? So let's go ahead and post a comment on a post. Uh, let's say test post, and then click create. Now it's giving me an error that I don't have a mass assignment allowed. So for this, uh, I'll just quickly go ahead and disable mass assignment on my comment. Uh, you can also go ahead and set the fillable. I'll just quickly disable it for the sake of the video. So we don't have to worry about it. And as you can see, the comment was created. Okay, so the creation process is done. So now that we have completed the creation for the, obviously the edit form is exactly going to be identical. We don't need to worry about it. Of course, you guys can go ahead and style this a little bit, change the layout. And if you like, you can also go ahead and change this from commentable to something else if you like using a label. So here I can say a label uh, comment type. I don't know, whatever it is, okay, commentable type. Whatever you like, you can go ahead and type. Doesn't really make sense in this case, but you can use the label uh, method call to change it to whatever you like. So that's for the edit and the creation page. What about the table itself? Right now for the table itself, uh, I haven't seen any custom uh, kind of columns for polymorphic relationships. So we have to use the existing tools in Filament. Now the easiest way of doing this basically guys, you can go ahead and use a text column and then have your commentable uh, type as well as your commentable ID shown over here, okay? Now, if you want it to be a little bit better, maybe show that, for example, if it's a, you know, a user, show the email, if it's a post, show the title, and things like that, then you would have to do a little bit more work that's a little bit outside the scope of the video, but you can go ahead and do that as well if you guys would like. I haven't covered how to do more complicated stuff in the table, so I'm not gonna be covering in this video. But basically, that's generally the easiest way of doing it lets you know, okay, this is a post and then the ID is seven, right? Now by default, when you do relationships in Filament, it doesn't link to that page, which is something I kind of wish it did similar to like Laravel Nova when you define relationships. That doesn't happen by default. So you can obviously achieve that, but it's a little bit extra work, but you can do that if it's something you, you prefer. And also I'm gonna go ahead and do a text column for uh, the comment itself, right? Again, you can do a conditional or maybe define a method on your uh, comment class to easily get what is used to identify that specific class. So, but that's gonna be some additional logic you need to do. In this case, I'm gonna say user.name. All right, so that's gonna be the table itself. Very straightforward. So that's the first part of it. Now, what if you wanna also be able to see your relationship on all the other classes that have kind of a, a morph many relationship with these comments, right? So for example, I wanna be able to see all the comments for our posts when I go on this post over here, right? So I already have it for the authors of a post. I also want to see all the comments. So in those cases, uh, you can use a repeater. There are a few different ways of doing it. I'll show you guys how to use it. Do it using a relationship manager because 
it's a bit more flexible. And then with the relationship manager, it also translates very well to many to many relationships. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And if you guys would like, once I make a video on repeaters, I'll also cover repeaters as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off by first creating a relationship manager. And if you guys haven't worked with relationship managers, the name kind of suggests it's basically a table like this that I have over here. It lets you see all the relationships uh, that basically the current resource has, for example, all the authors, and then you can kind of in the table do whatever you like. If it's a many to many, you can attach, detach. You can, if it's like one to many, you can delete, edit, or create, or these are all customizable. So let's first create a relationship manager. So we'll do PHP artisan, make filament relationship manager. So that's the command name. And then after that, you need to put the resource that this uh, relationship manager is going to be shown on. Okay. So you need to actually kind of repeat this multiple times. So for in this case, I want to show the comments on the post resource. Okay, so I'm going to put in post for the first one. And then as a second argument, you need to pass in the relationship name. Okay, so let me open up our post model. And let's close all these. So basically, as a second argument, you need to pass in whatever the relationship name is. Okay, so in this case, it's comments. And then the last part is what is the unique identifier for that comment that you want to show? Okay. So basically when I click on this attach, what should be shown here, right? In this case, for example, I'm showing the name if it was a user. So for our comments, we don't have anything like that. I'll go ahead and I use the ID of the comment, or maybe we can use comment itself. Why not? Okay. It's going to be a bit long, but it's okay. And I might have made a typo somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, I have. Let's just copy it from here, make it a little easier. It's actually a relation manager. I did relationship manager, my bad. Yep. We don't need the sheep. All right. So now that we have created this, by the way, if you guys forget these arguments, just hit enter. Uh, it has like an interactive menu so you can see what exactly it means. Okay. So now that we have created the relation manager, uh, it should be under our post resource or whatever resource you made it on relation manager. And then now we have a comments a relation manager, right? So every specific resource you want to show this on, you need to create a custom relation manager for. You can use mix and match these as well. But when you're doing more kind of polymorphic relationships, actually, I think one of the few times it's actually useful to have it duplicated for each of them. Okay. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and register this. So once we have created a relation manager, we need to go ahead and register it on the resource you want to show it on. So in this case, I want to show it on the post resource. So I'll open up our post resource file. And at the bottom, there is a section called get relations. So this is where you define or register your relationship manager. So in this case, I'm going to say comments, uh, relation manager class. All right, that's all we have to do. So let's save this. Let's go back to a quick reload. And if I go down, we can see we have our authors. We also have the class comments, right? Now by default, it's empty. We have basically the new comment. So let's go ahead and first uh, create this, create new comment. Now you can also disable these if you guys would like. I do have a video on relation manager, guys. So, but if you want, uh, the buttons are all at the bottom inside this relation manager. So let's open it up. You can obviously disable this, but let's go ahead and first create the form itself. Now, because this uses the relationship method we have when creating these, we actually don't need to define the polymorphic related parts of it. So all we need is the comment and the user IDs. Okay, so I'll open up our comment resource, we can just copy it from here. We only need the first two, we don't need the commentable part. Because by default, obviously, all the comments we create should belong to this post, this is whatever, okay, or this lock second post. So filament automatically handles that because it's using that relationship function. Okay, so it's automatically associated to it. So we don't need this commentable here, you can move it there, but it won't do anything. So I'll just go ahead and copy these two, or all the ones on really other than commentable, move them over here. And I need to also import these. So let's do select as well as uh, text input. All right, so now if you do a quick reload, and we try again, as you can see, it is working. And I can also go ahead and create a new post or a new comment, click create. And it's automatically associated with this post, right, which is very nice. And if I go back, as you can see, it is also working on our comments page. So that's the first step. So we have already set up the create. What about the table? So this one, because we are obviously this uh, comments relation manager is inside our post resource, 
we know it's showing a post, right? So in our uh, text column, we can actually go ahead and show, you know, we can either show the post details if you guys would like, but since we've already shown under the post itself, I think it's a little bit redundant to show the post again. So in my case, generally, I just show the comment and maybe some other pivot data or whatever you need related for the comment. So in our case, I think we only need the user itself. Okay, so I'm going to say user dot name. Okay, so we don't need anything related to the post itself because it's already under the post, right? So we don't need to see the name again. And that's basically all we have to do on uh, this uh, specific page, okay? And of course, I can go ahead and edit this or delete this if I want as well. Very uh, straightforward. Now, technically speaking, you can go ahead and uh, reuse this Commerce Relation Manager on your other resources as well because we are not referring to anything specific for the post, but I don't think that's gonna work generally speaking, okay? So, well, let's go ahead and try it out. I haven't actually tried it myself, let's see. So let's say I also wanna be able to uh, comment under another comment. So I'll go ahead and open up our comment uh, resource. Under good relations, I'm gonna say uh, comments relation manager. Let's go back, do a quick reload. So I'll open up this comment and let's try to put another comments here. And it's telling us comments does not exist. So let's go ahead and actually define that uh, relationship. And I'll copy it from our post resource. So basically a comment can also have co comments of its own. So let's do a quick reload. And as you can see, uh, this thing still works. Now let's try to also create a new one. I'll do it for Matt. Click on create. And as you can see, it is indeed still working without any issues. And if you go all on the comments, as you can see, it's what posted for our comment. However, the issue with this approach is this relationship manager is under the post resource. And if you, for some reason, later on, decide to include something only specific to the uh, to posts inside this relation manager, you may face some issues. So you may want to go ahead and create a relationship manager for every single page that is shown on. It's a little bit repetitive work, especially if you're doing something similar like I am doing over here. You're not actually, uh, you're just showing the comment and the user. In those cases, I just want to mention that it is possible to reuse it if you want, okay? But you can also go ahead and create a custom relation manager for every uh, resource. So one for the post, one for the comments, and one for the users. And I hope, uh, I clarified on that. So we can create one for each of them or we can also reuse one that you already have. And that's it guys for the basics of one-to-many and one-to-one -one polymorphic relationships inside Filament. It's relatively easy to do. So uh, if you guys have any questions, you can let me in the comment section below. If you guys are interested, I can also make a video on many-to-many -many relationships or polymorphic relationships. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, let me know in the comments. And of course, as always, if the video was helpful, make sure you like the video and subscribe. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.